Okay, hopefully you got a paper like this in class. Um, this is just to review. So it's just review of the operations with fractions. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions is something that you've learned before. It is not brand new, but fractions come up a lot again in chapter two, so we wanted to review it before we get into chapter two. So I'm gonna start with adding. Adding fractions, your first step, and you're just gonna fill in the blanks as we go, and then we'll do one example of each operation. Your first step is to take any mixed numbers and turn them into improper fractions. So for example, if you had something like two and one fifth, we don't wanna to try to add or subtract or multiply or divide with mixed numbers. So we are always gonna turn that into an improper fraction. So that would be, um, if you remember, we multiply here. So that would be 10 plus one gives me 11 fifths. I would always do that before I start doing the operation, okay? Step two, determine what your LCD should be. So I'm gonna write down LCD is least common um, denominator. So that means we're thinking about on the bottom of a fraction, what would I need to have in the denominator so that they match before I add or subtract. Okay, so if you remember LCM, least common multiple, this is an LCD, just a least common denominator because we're looking at finding that LCM for the bottom of our fraction. So figure out what it's gonna be in step two and then step three, actually rewrite each fraction with the LCD, with that common denominator that you picked. So hint, remember if you change the denominator to get a common denominator, you must also change the numerator. So anytime you're rewriting a fraction, if the bottom number changes, you also have to change the top number. And we'll look at that in our example. So after you have rewritten them with common denominators, add the numerators, so add the top numbers together, and leave the denominators the same. Okay, that's important. We don't actually add the two bottom numbers. They just stay the same. Number five, make sure your answer is simplified, okay? And change it to a mixed number if needed. So we're gonna clarify that when we get to our answer, but always simplify. You always wanna make sure it's simplified, but then it could be written as an improper fraction or a mixed number, both are technically correct. Check and see if the directions ask you to write it one way or the other. Check and see if the choices might be one way or the other. Um, so then just think about writing it as a mixed number if you need to at the end. Okay, I'm going to put a clean paper down and work out this example. So I have my example for adding 2 and 2 thirds plus 1 and a half. Well, we said the first thing was to rewrite them both as improper fractions. So I'm going to multiply and then add. So 6, 7, 8 over 3 plus multiply here 2 plus 1, 3 over 2. So I've rewritten it with um, improper fractions. Next step would be to rewrite them both with common denominators. So now I'm looking at, okay, what do three and two both go into so that they have denominators that match? Well, they both go into six. So here's where I get my common denominator. And then I have to actually rewrite this. So if this got multiplied by two, I need to do eight times two. And if this gets multiplied by three, then I need to do three times three to get a new numerator. And then I would add, okay? Then add the numerators up, so 16 plus nine, and then keep the denominators the same. So that's my final answer. This is written as an improper fraction, but it is simplified. There's nothing I can divide both of these by, so I can't simplify it any further. I'm good. I could change it to a mixed number and I would get this, but they don't, if the directions don't tell you to, then technically this is also correct, okay? Okay, let's keep going with subtracting fractions. A lot of these steps are the same, so I'm gonna go a little quicker, but pause if you need to catch up. 
Again, we're going to convert any mixed numbers to improper fractions. We don't want to do the problem with mixed numbers. So that's always your first step. Again, determine what your least common denominator is going to be. What does that denominator need to be so that they match before we can add or subtract? Rewrite both fractions with that least common denominator. So figure out what it's going to be on the bottom, and remember, you probably have to change the top number as well. Anytime the denominator changes, you also have to change the numerator to rewrite that fraction. Okay, now we're just subtracting the uh, numerators, and denominators stay the same. And our last step is also the same. Make sure it's simplified. Always, always simplify your answer. A lot of times you'll get it wrong or you won't even see your choice there if you haven't simplified it. And then if, you, if it makes sense or if they ask you to, you can change it back to a mixed number. Okay, so I'm going to put my example up for subtraction. Here we go. So I do see a mixed number here. My first step is going to be to change that into an improper fraction. So multiply and then add to so four, five, six, seven fourths minus two thirds. Okay, so I've gotten rid of my mixed number. Now I need to get a common denominator. So I'm thinking, what do four and three both go into that I could use as my denominator? And I come up with 12. So again, I'm gonna color code. If this got multiplied by three, then this needs to get multiplied by three, and I'd get 21. And this got multiplied by four, so two has to get multiplied by four, and I get eight. And then I'm subtracting. Okay, so we're ready to subtract the numerators. 21 minus eight is 13. Denominators stay the same. So technically, that's a fine answer. If they ask you to write it as a mixed number, you could give me one in one twelfth. Okay? So the front should be all filled in. We'll flip it over onto the back to look at multiplying and dividing. Okay, multiplying. You'll notice this first step is, again, the same. Change any mixed numbers to improper fractions. We do not want to do the problem with mixed numbers. Okay, when we're multiplying, look for anything you can cross cancel. And we'll, we'll take a look at that in our example, but it's an important step. This is so that your answer is simplified at the end, okay? And it makes the numbers easier to use, smaller and easier to use. Once you've looked for anything to cross cancel, multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. And double check that it's simplified. It should already be simplified because we cross canceled up here, but just in case, double check. And then if a mixed number makes sense, convert it back to a mixed number. Okay. So let's take a look at our example here. All right, when we say cross cancel, that means look for anything on the top that simplifies or cancels or reduces with anything on the bottom. So in this example, I noticed that three and 12 can be reduced, right? Three goes into both of those. So if I notice that they have a common factor that I could sim simplify by or divide by, I'm gonna do that. So three goes into three once, three goes into 12 four times, and that's cross canceling. I've simplified the numbers I can. Okay, I also noticed that five goes into five and 10, so I could reduce by five here. Five goes into five once, five goes into 10 twice, and now I have a reduced um, problem. So you can do it right from here, or you could write it again. Now my problem looks like this. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and double check that it's simplified. If you did all the cross canceling that you could here, your answer should already be simplified. 
if you miss something here, you're going to have to have a step where you've got something left to simplify in your answer. Okay? All right, on to dividing. I'm sure you're not surprised by the first step. If there are any mixed numbers, turn those into improper fractions <clears throat> before you start doing any dividing. Okay, this is something hopefully you remember from when you learned it in fifth or sixth grade. Keep, change, flip. So what does that mean? The first number always stays the same. Keep it that way. Change the division to multiplication and rewrite the second fraction to its reciprocal. And reciprocal just means to flip it over. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. If you had three-fifths, the reciprocal would be five-thirds. Okay, it has nothing to do with the sign. If this is positive, it's still positive. If this was negative, it's still negative. The sign doesn't change. The reciprocal just means you simply flipped it over upside down. Okay, so we're not going to go into why we do that. That's fourth, fifth, sixth grade stuff, but that's the rule for dividing fractions. Now that we have a multiplication problem, we have the same steps as we did up top. Check for anything you can cross cancel. Okay, remember that helps us simplify it and have easier numbers to work with. Multiply across the top, so the numerators, and multiply across the bottom, the denominators, together. And of course, always simplify. Should be done already because you cross canceled, but just in case. And a mixed number if that makes sense. So here we go. Last example, dividing fractions. I do see a mixed number, so my first step is going to be to change that mixed number into an improper fraction. So multiply and then add 3, 4 thirds divided by eight thirds. So just getting rid of my mixed numbers there. Then keep the first number the same, change it to multiplication, and flip the second fraction over. Now I'm ready to follow my steps for multiplying. So then I'm looking for something to cross cancel. So I notice four goes into both of these. So four goes into four once, four goes into eight twice. And even just the three and the three cancel out, right? Three goes into three once, three goes into three once. And now after cross canceling, I have a new problem that looks like one over one times one over two. And I get one half, which should already be simplified. Okay, so keep, change it to multiplication, and then this second fraction gets flipped to its reciprocal, flipped upside down, okay? So we wanted to go over that before we start adding in negatives with all of these fraction operations. All right, thanks.